Hello, boys and girls. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a clock uh, that is a flower that you can use at home to practice telling your time. So this is one that I've made with a different class in another year. Um, and our clock is going to be a little bit different because instead of having different color petals, we're going to stick with our sunflower theme and we're going to all make a sunflower clock. So this is what the finished product will look like. I'm going to set that to the side and show you the materials you're going to need to find. In your packet, you have uh, a little stapled together group of stuff that looks like this. You've got a baggie with some clock hands, a little metal brad, and the leaves. You have a green long strip of paper for the flower stem, a yellow sheet. This is going to be our flower petals. And then you have a clock face. So those are the materials you're going to need to find out of your packet. For this activity, you're also going to need scissors. You're going to need a black marker. You're going to need a pencil and a glue stick. All right. So for this one, we're going to start by taking our package of materials apart. And you can go ahead and just tear that staple apart because we're not going to have a background on these. We're going to be cutting out all these pages. All right, I'm going to start by cutting out the clock face. It's on cardstock paper so that it's thick and heavy for you to use. Try to cut so that you don't leave any white space around the edge, but don't cut into the clock either. So practice your cutting, making sure you're pretty precise. Okay. Once you have that cut out, you're going to need to find an adult to help you with this next part. You need to take your sharp pencil and you need to poke a hole with your really sharp pencil right on that black dot. My trick, if mom and dad will let you do it, is to do it on the carpet. Set it down on the carpet and when you poke the pencil through, it won't ruin the table or the counter. So I'm going to take mine down to the carpet and show you how to poke that hole. Okay, so you set it on the carpet, you take the pointy end of your pencil, put it right in the middle and just push straight down. You'll hear it go pop. And then you have a hole in the middle of your clock. <laughs> and hopefully not a hole in the carpet. <laughs> All right. So we're going to turn this clock into a flower. I'm going to take the stem and I'm going to glue the stem on the back. So we'll flip the clock over and you'll want the you'll want to be sure that your stem is coming out of the number 6 cuz the number 6 is the very bottom on the clock. So when you flip your clock over, make sure you know where the number 6 is on your clock. If you want to, you can take your pencil and you can do a little peek like this and put a little mark where the 6 is so that you know where to glue your stem. Your stem's already cut for you, so all you need to do is put that glue on there and glue it down. Okie dokie. For the next part, you'll want to take your sheet of yellow circles and cut all of the circles out. There's 12 of them, one for each spot on the clock. Okay, so I saved you some time and I've already got my circles cut out so that you don't have to watch me cut those all out. When I'm gluing my circles on, you can see that I, when I cut that out, I got a little bit of the line still left on the paper. So you know we're going to make sure that that is the side that we put our glue on so that the person looking at our craft doesn't have to see the lines. I'm going to glue one of these petals onto every number around the clock. When I glue it on, let me show you right here on the number nine. When I glue it on, I want to make sure that part of this line is showing and that it covers up part of it. I don't want to cover up the number at all. So when I glue this circle on, I'm going to glue it on just like that. So um, if you're thinking in measurements, it's about a half of an inch in is about how far I'm going to put my glue. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of those on every number. They shouldn't necessarily overlap. They might touch, but your petals won't overlap. 
Make sure you're using enough glue so that your petals don't fall off. We're only gluing just a little tiny part of the petal on there, so you wanna make sure that you're not skimping on your glue. Otherwise, you're gonna have petals falling off. I'm gonna stick some glue down on a couple of these and then go back and slap those petals down. Oh, these are gonna be cute. How fun. I can't wait to see the pictures of these that you make, boys and girls. Feel free to pause and rewind if you need to go and hear the directions again if you didn't understand something. All right, there's my petals all glued on around my clock. Each of these petals is gonna be a helper for us now to tell us the minutes in the clock. So the next step that I need to do is I need to use my pencil and I need to write the minutes on the clock. We're gonna write them in pencil first and then we'll trace over them with our black marker or if you have a Sharpie at home, you can use your Sharpie. When we write numbers on the clock for the minutes, we're gonna write the colon first. Remember the colon is two dots and then after the colon, we have to write two numbers. So on the very first one, I'm gonna write the colon and then I'm gonna write zero, zero because we know when the minute hand is on the 12, it's zero minutes after the hour and we say o'clock. We're gonna go around the clock counting by fives and fill that in. So right at the one is going to be five minutes. That's zero, five. And when you're writing these, try to make sure that your numbers are staying straight up. So pretend like all of these have a line on them and that you have to write your number on the line. A lot of kids want to turn it and write, for an example, on the three right here, they would turn it and they would write it like this. And then when they go to work on their clock time, the 15's not going the right way up. So make sure that all of your minutes are going the right way up. All right, let's finish. Let's finish our numbers. So we start at zero, then five, the next one's gonna be 10, but we have to take out that zero now because only two numbers can go after the colon. So here's our 10, and then 15, and then 20, and then 25, and 30, Now, if we kept going, we'd come back to 60 because there's 60 minutes on the clock all the way around, okay? After you have those all written down, you can go ahead and trace them with your black marker or your Sharpie. I'm gonna save that step for myself until the very end. So now we're going to need the materials that are in a little baggie. Hopefully you kept them in the baggie while we've been talking. You do have a brass brad in there and I only gave you one, so be very careful not to lose it while you're working on these steps. Inside the baggie, you have two different size black pieces of paper. Those are for the hands on your clock. They're not cut yet. You have to trim them to make them pointy. So in order to trim them to make them pointy, all you need to do is snip the end into a point. So there that point is ready. And this one's actually a little bit fat, so I think I'm gonna trim it down to make it a little bit skinnier. I don't wanna cut through that hole. And then turn that into a point as well. I think I'll trim a little bit off of this side too. Okay, get my scraps out of there. 
these are your hour hand and your minute hand. So we're gonna stack those up so that the holes on the hour hand and the minute hand line up with that hole that you made in your clock face. And then we're gonna take this little thing called a brad. And this part is gonna stay on the top of our picture. And this is the part that pokes through. So I wanna take this and I want to put, push it through the holes in the clock. You might need to do it one piece at a time. So if I start with one hand, I can slide that on there. I can slide the other hand on there and then poke it through that hole I made on the clock. And then we'll want to flip it over. After we flip it over on the bread, you have to take the long one and bend it over away from the small one and then bend the small one back the other way. So it should look spread out like that when you're done. And that holds our pieces in place so that they can spin. When you flip it back over, you'll be able to spin your clock hands around on your clock. Here's Miss Miggy's favorite time of day. <laughs> I bet you know why. To complete our clock before we put our finishing details on, on with the black Sharpie, I need to put my, my leaves on. And the leaves aren't just for decoration. These are to help you remember which hand on the clock is the minute hand and which clock is the hour hand. So the big leaf goes with the big hand and we're gonna call that the minute leaf. So on the leaf with your pencil, you're gonna write the word minute. Make sure you watch how Miss McGee spelled it and spell it correctly, please. I don't, whoops, I can't do upside down E very good. I don't want you to guess on the spelling. I want you to make sure that you are spelling it correctly. And then the hour hand, I'm gonna flip over the other direction so that it points the other way. I'm sorry, the hour leaf. This leaf goes with the hour hand because it's the small leaf goes with the small hand. And on that one, I'm gonna write the word hour. Starts with an H, it has a silent H in it if you didn't already know that. And you're gonna write the word hour on that leaf. I'll go ahead and cut those out. And then we'll add our finishing touches. I just thought I might have cut these out before I wrote on them actually because then you can decide which side you're going to write on. I'm having to be very careful to cut all the black line off on this so that the pe people that look at my art don't see that. So if you already wrote on them, that's okay. No big deal. Just try and trim off that extra black around them. All right, and then you decide where you wanna glue them, one on each side of the stem. Remember, these are to help you remember that the minute hand is the big hand, cause it's the big leaf, and the hour hand is the little hand, cause it's the little leaf. My flower clock is just about done. All I need to do now is use my Sharpie to go ahead and trace all of the numbers and the words. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll show it to you when it's finished. As we're doing that, let's practice counting around the clock again. O'clock, O5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and back to o'clock. Now we'll go down and trace our leaves for the hour hand and the minute hand so that those stand out. Oops, 
My end doesn't look very good. There we go. If you want to sign this art, you can sign it on the back or you could sign it down at the bottom of the stem. Whichever you want. So there you have a sunflower clock for practicing your time. So here's one way you could practice with it. I could say, okay, mom, dad, what time is it if I set the clock like this? And you could quiz mom and dad and they could try and guess what time that is. And then you could give the, your flower clock to mom and dad and they can set a time and they can quiz you. So remember, on the shorthand, you look at where it's pointing to. It's working, pointing to the six. So that's six. And then if we look at where our minute hand, our minute hand is pointing to the 10. So it's six, 10. All right, boys and girls, show me a picture of your clock. You can either post it on Facebook or you can send me an email.